ここはどんな客人も歓迎いたしますよ私はヘドン<笑>この塔の管理人 Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast More Tower of God coming at you. We're one episode away from the end, man. Can't believe we're already here. And like you pointed out today, Adam, the next episode lands on the 25th in Japan. I can't take all the credit for it, man. I saw some tweet. You guys think about how the last episode's coming on the 25th. And I was like, oh, dude, I see where you're going with this. And then the next comment underneath that was like, yeah, because 25th, bam. I was like, dude. Dude, that <laughs> tinfoil, bro. Tinfoil. I was already on my head at that point. I guess that's why the episode drops on Wednesdays, right? They're like, all right, we have to end it on the 25th of this month. What day is that? Fuck, Wednesday? Or, well, Thursday, Japan? I'm like, yeah, I guess that's fine. Let's do it. Fuck it. I mean, I'm with it, man. That's my birthday. But fucking. I mean, honestly, it felt like it came by really fast, but I mean, it really was only 13 episodes. And also, you know, quarantine stuff is just. Makes time all distorted over here. So before we get in here, man,、uh, there's one thing that I that I saw. I I haven't confirmed it, but I, I saw this on the subreddit about the English dub. They don't say administrators when they're talking about them. They say guardians. I don't know how I feel about that. Guardians. That yeah, they call them guardians. Two things about that, right? One, the subtitles for the Japanese dub they say administrators. I've been going through the wiki and tower recently, right? Just trying to get as much info as I can, try to map things out. In the wiki, they, they don't say administrators either. They say guardians. It, it's always so weird. Like, there's so many terms that have double words in this lore that is Tower of God, right? Andrasi, Endorsi, Jahad, Zahad, Zahard. You know, like, which one's the real one? Yeah. Yeah. Even, navigator even, guide. Navigator you know. guide, yeah. Like, in, <laughs> yeah. in this episode. They still say navigator for the Japanese dub. I mean, I guess it's the same, but nah, I'd rather have guide. I, I mean, I, I think we're just so used to seeing guide that. I, I mean, I said this when we did the first episode for Tower. I was like, I don't really like this, man. You、mm-hmm. know, and I know that in the first episode, they did change some of like the actual wording in it from the time that it had dropped and then to like a couple hours later, you know, but navigator has kind of been through and through for all the anime. If that's how they want to go through it, that's fine. <clears throat> But, and well, you know, all the blame can't be on the anime. Like, the Manwa 2 still has problems. Ever since、uh, SIU went to Webtoons, they've kind of fixed some things with the translations, right? Where we have concrete names.、Mm-hmm. But, you know, going through reading the chapters for this episode, they still refer to Evangel as a guy, not as yeah, a woman. Yeah, that, that was one thing I was going to say. And I, I think I, we talked about this a while ago.、Uh, I don't know if it was on the podcast or not. But I had mentioned, I was like, When we first saw what Ivan Kel looked like, it kind of took me for a loop. I was like, okay, but wasn't this like a, a dude the whole time? You know, and then in the anime, they reference Ivan Kel as a female, which I'm like, okay, obviously because we know who she is in the Manwa now. Like, she's actually made a lot of appearances. She's much more of like an actual character than just, you know, someone on the sidelines. But, it, it, you know, when I was rereading the chapters, I noticed that too, Danny. I was like, huh, I guess we were all right. Like, Ivan Kel was you know, referenced as a dude. And, you know, maybe part of that is still just, let's, they didn't really bother to go through everything to translate, you know, to fix all the translations.、Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that could be one thing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you guys saw, but、uh, in the anime too, they,、um, at least on Crunchyroll, they, they made Evangel a woman too. Yeah. 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 That, that's exactly what we're saying. Yeah. So I think to me, that feels like they know what the, how the story is. For Tower, right? If they, uh, cause if they were just going off of season one, I don't think they would have, they would have referenced. Well, I guess, I guess cause SIU is helping them out too, right? Well, the other thing too, I don't know if you ever read that interview from the director of the anime, like a while, like a good couple weeks back, but he had said he actually knew the source material. You know, like he was, he's been a fan of Tower for a while. I mean, that makes sense to me that they actually made her female. I mean, reference her as a female this early on as opposed to how it was in the manhwa. You know, there's a, and that's why I'm trying to understand the way that they're making the anime go as far as all their decisions. Because this guy said he knows source material. You have SIU working on it as well. You know, like the people that are, are working on this anime, like clearly know what's going on. And now that we're at the end, like a lot of the, a lot of the decisions I fully agree with. Some of them I really don't, mainly for the fact that I feel that there's like some of it is important dialogue, but we can clearly get there in season two. Hopefully, if we do get it. You know, but others, 
it's just like it saturates the moment like for the scene with bam and rachel in this episode i think it still worked out just fine regardless there was just a little bit more going on there in the manhwa that i really appreciated because it's like you you get that feeling like okay no she she really started not to care about this you know kid for a little while before you know and bam has always been like dude i just want to be there with you like you're the only thing that i know you're basically my best friend and then the moment i was waiting for for so long dude finally happened you know, sweet lo- sweet victor <laughs> dude okay you know but before i get into that i do really like what they did and just having it be the ending credits <sighs> that was much sweeter yeah that was pretty good yeah let's get let's get deep in this episode man episode 12 the underwater hunt part 2 man I said last week favorite episode will probably be this one and sure enough yeah yeah like like you were just saying right now Adam just the way they did the end of this episode was really good man and not just the betrayal with Rachel I think my favorite scene has to be the scene with Bam fighting the bull just the mm-hmm. way they do it is so good man it, it makes you really want to root for the character because you know, the, the way he's drawn and the way he's kind of attacking and, and the way we've seen him this entire season is like, we've never really seen him actually do any action. Like, I think the common idea is that Bam's kind of a weak guy, you know, but he's but he's a good enough guy that we want to, you know, team up with him. As we see him stand his ground, I was like, oh, this is so good, man. It's perfect. I, I loved how you like, it, it had that very much of a like, at least for me, like a Mortal Kombat feel where like, oh, you're getting beat up. Oh, now we see the bruises, like we see the cuts, you know? And when he just went to one arm, like you can see there's like a, I mean, it may just been the way the animation cell was, but it looks like a chunk of his arm is gone, like in his shoulder. I was like, yeah, it was good. Like it was ripped (laughs) off, huh? Like I was like, okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. This is really, really nice. I don't know if you guys caught onto this. I mean, we all know how it all started. He went into the belly of the fish and then he killed it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he stabbed it from the inside. So we took the same approach here. Which I thought was really, really cool as composed, you know, as compared to the, the Manwa where he shoots it right before it eats them whole. Yeah. Uh, my only complaint for what the anime did is we didn't get to see Bam freeze him with Shinsu like like they did in the Manwa. Yeah, that that would also be my only complaint. I mean, there's at least for me, there was two big scenes that I mean, not I wouldn't say really big, you know, two scenes that really kind of made me be like, mm, OK, uh, I'll, I'll take it for what it is. One of them was that with the bull. The other one was just the ending of the Yuri fight. Because he doesn't have that little bit of dialogue at the end where it's like, oh, my body's actually somewhere else. Haven't been here this whole time, you know, mm-hmm. this and that. Like, uh, that that's, I mean, as far as what I can remember, we still haven't seen him in a while, like in the Manwa. But that would have been nice to have, you know, because clearly this guy's going to keep coming back. He's going to be a recurring character. Well, I, you know the also the part where he mentions <laughs> that he's from the Lopo Bia family, uh, specifically to Andrasi, right? Because he's like about to kill her, and he's like, "Oh, there's one extra spot for the Lopo Bia family to mm-hmm. become a princess," you know. And again, I think that all that has to do with them like not really wanting to dive super deep into the monstrous lore that is Tower of God, right? Because there's just too much mm-hmm. to to really handle. Oh, for yeah, a 13 episode yeah. thing. I, wanna, I, I wouldn't blame them. So there's a lot. And you know, honestly, the, the perfect moment would have been this episode. Because I think, again, this is probably the best episode for the season. And it also really shows you what to expect for season two. The mm-hmm. stuff with Yuri, the stuff with Bam, and even the stuff with Kuhn, right? We see the other uh, Kuhn family member uh, come in and kind of work his stuff. All that is basically the same type of thing that's going to be happening in season two for Tower of God. No, it's, you know, and this is where I said earlier in the chat, Danny, I was like, this is what I was waiting for. Like the, for me, the most memorable scenes of season one, when I first read it was the ending, because there's just so much stuff that goes on in there. Like it's, it's so powerful and it really just sets the stage for season two. Like it was a little bit slow to start off with, but you know, it, it's like, Hey, this is the premise that you really need to know. Now we're going to dive even deeper into the lore of Tower of God, the, you know, the, the world building, so to speak. You know, of course, the only other stuff that I wish the anime w- did was the uh, the some of the flashbacks for this episode that was in the manhwa character development between characters. You know, like like we said last episode or the episode before, it's like yeah, we should have just had an odd number of episodes for the season to get some of this stuff because 
how they did it was probably okay. Like when with Androsi, an example, when she saves uh, Anak, and you know they're they're telling Yuri like, no, we want to climb the tower with Bam, you know, because he's my friend mm-hmm. and all that. And the good character development with Androsi for season one was when she was training with Bam in the Manwa, and they had conversations about you know, don't you feel lonely, Androsi, and all that, and really missed opportunity to have that in there. But again, for episode's sake, I guess that's how it is. I mean, I'm still going to keep saying, though, as much as I really wish we had a few more episodes, I think for 13 episodes, they did a pretty good job. Yeah, so far, it's, it's just pretty good. So I like it. I like it. So, you know, one one thing they could do, I would be fine with, a few animes have done it, like maybe have some OVAs for season one. I was thinking about that, too. Because it, it'd be kind of make it kind of fun uh, while we wait for season two and just, yeah, get all that behind the scenes stuff we didn't get for the anime. Uh, just like what I'm talking about right now, the Androsi Bam moments. I hope they do it. I mean, I, I think it would be a good idea, especially because if they if we do decide or I mean, whatever studio decides to pick up Tower wants to go with season two, I would rather wait two years and get like three Ovas and then I'd be good because season two is it's not short man that's long yeah that's a long boy right there and we ha- we haven't mentioned it either but this for the chapters for this episode uh we did get some flashback stuff with bam and rachel that's really important just not seeing it here i really really hope that's how we start off next episode is with that flashback stuff we didn't get to see yeah i i agree I mean, there's, I mean, okay, so the way the, the ending is, I don't know if you read ahead, Danny, but that one time a few weeks ago, I kind of read ahead to the end just to kind of refresh myself. There is a good amount of stuff that we do have to see, though, unfortunately. That kind of gives a little bit more of a background for some of the other characters. I don't want to give the spoilers. I mean, they could throw it in there, but there's just a couple more things that have to be said to finish off the season, like with the rest of the chapters. I mean, I want to say it's on pace to, to, to finish off, but... I have to double check because I think this one was what seven chapters. Uh, yeah, something like that. If we don't get any of that stuff, then I hope there is a possibility of OVAs. They throw that in there, you know, have one of just the downtime in the cafeteria or stuff, or in between tests. That's one OVA. The other OVA could be with Bam and Rachel specifically hanging out in that cave before they go into the tower. And then another one could just just be some fun random stuff like with Hang Sung Yu and coffee or something. Yeah. Uh, there's actually four more chapters for season one, and then it goes to season two, episode zero. Mm. So I I would like to say that we could probably get a next episode then, unless they want to really saturate out what goes on in these cha- these last few chapters, which would be fine as well. But there's definitely space for it. I mean, if we go on pace with how many chapters they've done for an episode. Yeah. And uh, if they want to do a tease, like I was saying last time, you know, do a JoJo type mm-hmm. of tease where we start seeing the beginnings of the next season uh they could totally do it uh one thing i wanted to talk about here was or two things is i don't know i don't know what they're trying to do here with bam and rachel uh last episode bam was saying like he feels some type of energy oh well i think that was just in the manwa huh (laughs) no that, that was just in the manwa yeah yeah well okay so here in the anime this episode both their hands started glowing yellow and it's like oh you feel that energy too and then rachel points out like oh we're in shinsu right now that's i i guess that's what they're kind of feeling but then when bam's starting to attack the the bull and then the the last attack he does is like yellow shinsu it's like oh i'm like what are they trying to do here is this something visually specific just for bam and rachel because they're irregulars you know is is maybe their shinsu's different in a way I, I think so, because, I mean, this is not the first time we've seen the Yellow Shinsu as well. Like, we have to remember to, back to the crown game, you know, when he did that to save Rachel. Yeah, so it, it's interesting to see, man. I, I, I would I would say probably in a regular thing, you know, because nobody else has it or one else has blue. Yeah, I wonder if that, that would be getting into spoiler stuff, so I'll just leave it at that, yeah. I guess. Uh, uh, music, solid, this episode. Again, very Kingdom Hearts, which Dude, is, it makes sense, right? I just hope they drop the OST, man. Like, I would love to just be having my serious gaming hours and then just have that in the background. Yeah, I don't see why not. I did find the name of the composer, too, because he's also done a couple other animes. I can't remember the name exactly. Off the top it's not of Utada Hikaru, is it? <laughs> no, I wish it was. No, it's uh, his name is Kevin Penkin. So he did Tower of God. Eden, Florence, Shield Hero, Made in Abyss, just like mm. those are the ones he has in his bio. 
But yeah, what, what I really liked about it is I think when the episode dropped, which is, I think when I found his profile, he was like, enjoy episode 12, friends. And then five hours ago, he was all, so how was it for you? I was like, dude, mm -hmm. damn, man. That And I really appreciated that because now, I haven't seen any other animes that he's worked on, but I can say that the passion for it is there. And he's done such a great job delivering it. Yeah, like, I mean, this whole season has been great. I mean, specifically the last few episodes have been outstanding, but it's all been so good. A lot of really great decisions made, you know, music wise. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I really love the, the music when it, when it hits, when it hits right at those perfect scenes, man. Oh, it's, it hits, it hits right. It hits right. Man. Mm -hmm. All right. We haven't talked about it yet, but man, the Yuri scenes in this episode were so good. Fucking Queen Yuri, dude. I want her to win. <laughs> I forgot that I forgot a lot of all this stuff from when I read. So it was like seeing it for the first time again. And ugh, it was so hype. I mean, and what I loved is for the people that are like completely anime only, you know, they got their first real look at Yuri and they would be like, oh, my God, like this girl is the best, like best female character ever, you know, to be debatable in all of, you know, Tower lore. But Yuri is phenomenal. Yeah, it was great. It also helps. It also helps set the tone for the rest of the episode when we get to the lead up of Rachel. No, I, I think it was you, Jerry. It was like, Oh, I just got to this part and I was all dude, that's where it starts climbing. You can just, oh, you're yeah. in it for the ride at that yeah, point. Yeah. man. Yeah. So, so great stuff. Uh, you know, another thing they bring in was they kind of teased it. Right. Uh, so Coons, uh, I guess, older brother, you could say, uh, shows up distant relative, a distant relative. Yeah. However, However, all that stuff works with these 10 great families and all that. But he, he comes in the model. He's got a team and they didn't really show up in the anime, which I mean, again, I just I, I guess it's fine because uh, they they didn't really do nothing, nothing that important. So I guess it was fine. to leave them out. Yeah. I mean, the players that really had actual moments, you know, we did get to see them. They had their moment of spotlight like Evan, Yuri, um, Kurdan, Kurdan, however they pronounce it. Kurdan, yeah, the big boy Thor. You know, it, it sucks though. They didn't they didn't mention his nickname in the anime. That's exactly what I was about to say. Well, what was it? Uh, Kurin the the slicer. It was something cool. The the cutter, maybe. Yeah, the cutter. I think that's what it was. I don't know if they say it in the anime. I can't remember. But in the manhwa, when they're all kind of discussing what's going on, Evans like, "You have one minute to do this." He goes, "Okay," and then he just dips out. The next thing you see is him just go and make some pancakes, bro. It's like, damn, dude, how fast are these people once they're actually getting to where they need to get to? So again, really love the episode. They did a great job in portraying all the all the themes and the dialogue. Even though stuff was different, it still felt the same. The Rachel Bam dialogue was different in the anime, but it still got the point across. Dude, I can't tell you how many times today I've gone on Twitter and seen people like change their profile name so like fuck rachel fuck rachel this and that like rachel's a bitch and i just look at it <laughs> and then yeah. like sometimes i'll go on threads for a tower and then some people like clearly you can tell they're definitely anime only they're all wow i wasn't really expecting that but fuck this character i'm just like dude yes this is the reaction i wanted when i first read this so many years ago i don't know why i always thought rachel stabbed bam in the back and then pushed him i don't know why i thought that but... no nah, no nah, she pushed him Okay, yeah, and the and the look of disappointment in my boy's eyes, you could just I felt that man. It's like it's like 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 shock. He's like, huh? Dude, really? that feeling sits sits with him for a long time, man. I don't know about you guys, but when we were watching the credits for the episode, and then just seeing Bam sink to the bottom of this underground well, I guess Kingdom Hearts energy. Yeah, but I felt like I would have rather seen maybe Bam kind of just struggle rather than just knock out Fade in the darkness well that too but like the fact that he's like knocked out just floating straight down i was like ah, i kind of wanted to see something more of like of like a, uh, so much confusion in his face and all that you know he has to wait for max Baxum yeah. to wake him up <laughs> <laughs> oh dude you gotta you gotta look at this way too though this dude has just gone through so much nonsense it's like you know his best friend with him supposedly right and then just ultimate betrayal from what i remember in the manhwa we don't get to see any of that. It's just kind of like it goes to the next scene. So to see him just kind of fall and then have it be th those other scenes, I'm like, okay, this was really, I think it was a really good decision. Let's let you guys sit with that feeling of what just transpired. Exactly. 
Well, dude, there was a lot going on in this episode, and I appreciated it. I could, I could follow, actually follow along what was happening. Yeah. Okay. A lot of events going on. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you guys that. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's there's another fine detail why, but I can't say it because it's a spoiler, so I'll bring it up next week. Like, there's there's a one particular reason why this was a great decision, but I can't say it. For the people that have read it who know what that is, then, but very good move. And again, I want to bring up what you said earlier, Jerry. I've always really appreciated the openings and endings. Like, I thought they were pretty solid. After seeing this roll into the credits, I was like, I I see where you were going with this the whole time. Yeah, no, I I, I didn't warm up to it, like, until to this episode for some reason. Maybe because it's the last one and I kind of knew it already. I don't know, big, big, like, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but, like, it felt like something you would see out of, like, the maybe, like, the last fight of a, of a series or something where, like, the character goes all out. Yeah, and if no. this and if this does get a season two, hopefully they use this this like this opening track as like a you know how like like JoJo does that shit where like if it gets intense and they use the intro again, the yeah, full version of that intro, yeah, like that, that's how I felt like maybe the by like if there's a second season, hopefully that they they'll use that as like a what what goes on in season two, judge. I just hope they use that for like an intense moment. So yeah, man, great episode, definitely the favorite. Like I said. And I think with that, we could go ahead, swing on over to the Manwa, check out what's going on, right? Season 3, episode 66 versus Calavan. This is part 7. Man, this is a hype, hype chapter, dude. There's so much going on. It, it was a really good follow-up to what happened last week. Yeah, it's good vibes in the beginning, and it's all it's all like, oh my god, yes, they, we did it. Man, my boy, just fucking proving once again that there's no such thing as OP. When you're in the tower, you keep climbing. Man, I don't know how he did it, but the boy Calavan again coming out with my favorite part for the chapter. Which part? Uh, all his parts, man. Uh, that <laughs> <laughs> the whole chapter. Because there's, because there's, there's, there's some good really, stuff in here, Like man. which part? Literally, like, like every part, dude. Because it's like it's just so... the first panel too itself, where he's just like, where he's just staring off, and what just the fuck just happened, dude? Like the whole cage itself just. Everybody in the cage just fucking came back to life, but everybody in the warship just yeah. Lutch is gone. Every all the all like the old squad is gone, and mm-hmm. he's over here just well, time to kill some people. Can I just say though, man, White's respect for him is oh insane. yeah, he's like don't, mm-hmm. it's so good. He he's like I won't even a lot of shit just happened right now. I'm gonna let him breathe. Like I it feels weird to hit him like this. I mean, like, I mean like, I'm not kicking a guy when he's down. That sh- yeah. that shot uh, of just his back. There's so much it's powerful, there. Dude. It's yeah, it's symbolic. Like like the, the the torn jacket is just like very like it parallels his fucking his pride for his fucking work. You know, like what he's what he does. Like he he tried to start over like from the beginning as a soldier, but all of that was just shattered in in one one explosion for him. He spent a good amount of his years, which is apparently very long in the fucking tower world since years is, is is doesn't exist dude years are days in fucking tower yeah bro so he so he's he fucking millennia's hanging of uh, training with these people vamoose and just to add to the shot of him in the back right we, you got to remember back to last chapter of just that that whole panel of him thinking about all the memories with his comrades you know and then you look closer it's like oh he sacrificed one of his arms during this fight and just to see it all just go away. He's he's a character I've learned to very much appreciate. Like to me, I don't see him as a villain. Like hey, he's like very anti. I think you said before he's like that chaotic neutral. I mean, especially in these these last two arcs where we really got to see his development. You know, like his backstory and everything. It really made me think, like, damn, dude. You know, this was so good. I can see why Jin Sung Ha went back to this guy for so long to have these conversations, you know, before he broke out and took the essence of bravery. He's a man with a mission, bro. Maybe he is. Yeah, and, you know, I, I threw some ideas out in the past few episodes of what Calavan's going to do after this. And, yeah, I guess it never crossed my mind. He's like, nah, man, I'm going to go finally Bowrick. I'm going to kill him and get my rank back. Well, uh, as we see, Calavan, Calavan brings back Hang Sung Yu and uh, that other... She's she's low pull be a, a member, right? Uh I don't remember to be honest. Oh, with you. she she on hot. She's a I think she's a hot special forces. Oh, okay. like commander. Like I think a step above or or no a step below the fucking uh uh Libori. 
Oh, okay. Like she's not she's not above him. I think I know that. Yeah, because because she got left behind as well. I mean, once Caliban knows that she's still kicking, because I think he's still in shock right now, I think he'll at least be happy. Like, dude, I've got one person. For him to have lost everything and still have at least one person there, that's that's going to make a big difference to Caliban, without a doubt. That's volumes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they already had their conversation, but... Yeah, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt if SIU's favorite character is Caliban right now, because just the amount of effort putting into his development yeah, I'm very looking forward to see what Calavan's going to be doing, uh, which which is which is going to be interesting, right? Because I, I forgot who mentioned it, but Hwariun, uh Karen, right? As as we know, Hwariun. <laughs> oh yeah, excuse me. No, dude, she's not Karen, bro. I will ne- I'll never accept it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she mentioned that we're not we're not entirely sure if there's even jihad forces behind this wall. So that 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 curiosity has me uh, interested to see what we're going to do. And you know, I was surprised we didn't get to, we didn't see Paul or Doom. They'll have their moment, I feel. And we saw everybody in this chapter having some sort of dialogue. Like we saw Yama talk about Bam, uh, Hawking's shooting the shit with Rack, Dewan and Cha have their moment. Need okay, we need to talk about this though, man. We talked about this a little before we started recording, Danny. But uh, the characters in the last panel, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Buddy. Hell's dude. yes, dude. The fucking oh jeez. Yeah, man. Uh, test big, four bros big hype dude i am very much excited Hoo-wee! low key i forgot who augustus was and i saw in the background and i'm like yo it's my boy love yeah dude it's hell yeah man it it did really <sighs> dude again man when tower when tower gets on a roll it gets on a roll dude and then it that ball does not stop like it just keeps. Were we just saying going. like we 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 haven't seen enough of the of the of like the Shinsu disc yet? Like in a while, right when that right when we said that shit, he come the master comes in, dude. That shit's it's serendipitous. It's so crazy to see this ranker come back, right? Because the, la- the yeah, last man. time we saw him was when he was fighting Bam in season two. Uh, like we were talking me and Adam before you hopped on, Jerry, about how yeah, I don't really remember what happens with him at the end of like in season two. Right, because if he's here, that means he's a part of Fug, which means he should have known who Bam was when Bam exactly. showed up. I'm sure he has his reasons. They are both of them, at least, because they're, they're they're a pair, aren't they? Like they one can't basically they're basically climb the tower together or train together, so they're like. I, I, I'm gonna go back. I'm telling you, once season one finishes next week, I'm gonna go back and reread season two, so I can give you some good hard facts. <laughs> once I get to that point. And we can come back to this. Because honestly, if they're coming out right now, dude, they're probably here to stay for a good while. Like, probably for the rest of this arc. And I, I think uh, they didn't love teach Bam, like, a more a more free-flowing use of the Shinsu to make him... I want to say yes. He taught him how to use bangs. Yeah, man. Big hype, dude. I'm excited. Yeah, man. A lot, lot of hype. A lot of hype in this chapter. Um, You, you mentioned, Adam, that the, the white guy next to Love looks familiar. Okay, at first I thought he was a crafter, but no. That's his, not name, him. his name is no his eyecrafter is dead. Yeah, uh, he's um his name is Augustus. And you know we we gotta mention it right. Uh, I got spoiled for this. I think this was the last spoil I got for the tower chap. You know, like the anime knew who the audience is. SIU knows who it is too. We got that big old shot with Coon and Bam getting that big old hug. Oh yeah, dude, be, that was see to my chest. That was so wholesome, man. That, shit was, that was that shit was adorable. Yeah, like it was, I. Uh, another favorite moment was between uh, it was between Dewan and Cha, where you know she's pissed off about uh, Luch dying during the explosion, and like that moment where he's like, "I guess that means we're going to battle again to avenge someone else again," uh, and then we just get that shot because if we don't fight, you know, dot dot dot. It's like ah, oh, that's good. Yeah, dude, lots of lots of great moments. Lots. I mean, everybody's here, dude. It just it just makes me more like excited to see what the Lopo Bia family's gonna do, like once they get past this. You know, because that's really who's behind the wall. And then we have that one I think it was uh Masheni Kun, she's in there, that general commander. Yeah. So this is gonna be Yeah, she's there. Pretty spicy one, you know, and I'm still gonna keep holding on to the thought that Jin Sung Ha is gonna be like the one who saves the day, like you know, whether it be Karaka or Bam or Hansen Yu that goes and saves him from whatever's going on. That's what I'm really hoping for, but we'll see. There's a lot of big players over here. We got two Slayers, a Slayer candidate, Calavan, 
commander generals. Like, come on, man. And then towards the end of this chapter here, right before Bam tries to open the the wall, we got some stuff with the Van Kale. She uh, confronted the sniper. More wild stuff from the tower, right? These we got these divine sea creatures protecting the sniper. Uh, they look like uh, crabs, lobsters type of thing. Mm-hmm. Evanko keeps saying dummy, right? Like, I, like I want to say like that's what Evanko is calling her—that she's a dummy, that she thinks she can kill me with a bullet type of deal. Uh, but then the part where she's like, I guess the dummy was designed as a fishbowl to send these creatures out if they ever came under attack. So I feel like this isn't even a real body kind of thing. I don't know. What did you guys think? Yeah, I I could definitely see that because like we were talking about with the tower episode in the anime, you know, we have that one ranker who in the modern way, he goes, oh, I'm not even here. Like, this is just a shell for me. I mean, we still don't know the full capabilities of the Lopobia family. We know that they can speak to animals, you know, or, or creatures and they can use them against their will amongst like other things they can do. So it's I wouldn't be surprised if this is just a substitute. Yeah, and she decides to cooperate with Evankil by giving them information about the hidden spot within the nest here. Why specifically they chose this spot. I feel like that's not going to pop up for a good while. I, I don't think Evankil is going to come back, like regroup with everybody for a few chapters. No, I feel like Evankil is going to do her own thing like with the information she's about to get. Like I, I don't even think she'll use her pocket to like send a message out to anybody. And if she did, it would probably be to Hanson Yu. Yeah, probably. And big surprise here that the uh, those jihad forces retreated right early in the chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean they've really? been saying this whole time that they've got something else behind the wall. I mean we know a few of the people that are there, but I mean they said I think I don't know if it was last chapter or, like when they talked about exploding the the warship was that oh we have like this whole new squadron of people like waiting that are much stronger than whatever Caliban's forces were, you know, save for himself and his big cheeses. Yeah, we got a shot of that right at the end of this chapter. We got all these Aquaman looking characters. Dude, I thought the same thing. The the thing that catches my eye in this panel is I'm like, yeah, this is very Tower of God. Like what what are we even looking at, right? There's those two guys. They have those giant pots on their backs. The big ass jars. <laughs> yeah. It looks like they got like Shinsu oozing out of it. I'm like, I'm betting like some type of creature's gonna pop out or something. And I'm like, yeah, it's oh, just more definitely. of that tower, that tower nonsense. But that's why it's so good, man. Because, like, you'll see some regular people, and then you see some, like, super buffed out people, and then you'll see some crazy-ass monsters. <laughs> like, like the monkey, right, that showed up earlier? <laughs> Dude, that monkey <laughs> just throwing shit, bro. <laughs> shit was cool. That's probably one of my favorite creatures. Yeah, it's definitely drawn. The way, like, again, like, it, that monkey's eyes is just, like, it's there's, there's no soul back there. <laughs> it's the thing <laughs> nightmares are made of, man, I, I tell you. Yeah, so great chapter, you know, a nice, it was a nice breather too, after everything going on. Even like Cal, like everybody said like, yo, we need a break. They're like, oh, we, we got Calavan here. How about let's just, let's take five people. Can't wait to, for next chapter, see what's going on. I'm going to keep saying it, man. This is the best time to be a Tower fan. Oh, you know what I wanted to talk about? Uh, since it, it popped up here in the anime as well. And I, I've been, actually been thinking about it too. I was like, what, what's the next arc after this, right? For the Manwa? And I think the next step for Bam after all this is he might go to Floor 77 and go visit our yeah. boy Yurik. Uh, well, hike song, fucking, uh... Oh, you mean, do you know what that means? Dude, we get to see my boy, man. Eminem, fucking dude. Rick Mazzino, baby, hell yeah! A rap god himself. The boy, dude. Now, my only thing is whether or not Bam's allowed to go that high. Because that's like 25 floors from where we're at. Yeah, and he's not really a ranker. You know, he beat that ranker, but that was just to show his strength. He, I don't think he ever got, like, the credibility, like, oh, you know, he is a, he is a ranker now, certified. He didn't get his driver's license. Well, well, the thing, yeah, the thing about, since you bring it up, wouldn't that would just change his regular rank, right? Because he's still a D regular the last time that was brought yeah, up. Yeah, so, so now he would be a C rank regular. And I think he's got to get to, like, I, I can't remember if you have to be, I think, B or A, and then you can actually be a, a ranker. Yeah, because yeah, I remember now during the Hell Train stuff, right when uh, the second group that they were ahead, and they're like, "Yeah, you got like Andrasi's team." It's like, "Yeah, Kuhn, like you guys are probably strong and all, but you can't come up here because of your ranking." That's I guess that's where it does change, right? Aside from like getting the test all the time. Um, I mean, what I could see before 
like, like in between, maybe because of what's going on here, like this whole battle. And of course, it's going to be recorded, you know, that might make him be a little bit higher rank. But I, I don't know. It's just that that whole system is so wonky. Like we haven't seen too much of how it actually progresses. You know, again, I just I just hope that once we get like a big breather after this fight, the SAU will catch us up on all that stuff. You know, kind of yeah. like in like like in Naruto, right? When you remember, like, there's a two year time skip. Naruto's back, and they're like, "Hey, man, mm-hmm. what are you what are you gonna do?" He's like, "What are you talking about?" It's like we're all Chunins. You're still a Gaining. He's like, "What the fuck?" And it's like, "Yeah, yep. bro, you just you just trained. You didn't you didn't take a test, dog. You studied all this time, but you forgot to write and grab your pencil." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know, that, that's yeah, what it I'm, is. Yeah, I'm sure he will. You know, I he's done a pretty good job of always, like, filling it back in. Like, filling in all the gaps. Well, it was... I don't think it was in the anime, but in the manhwa, Yuri was saying, like, yeah, tell Bam when he's a ranker, come to floor 77. Yep. Uh, which, mm-hmm. But but at, but at the same time, I'm like, well, you don't need to be a ranker because, you know, 134 is where you go to be a ranker. I'm willing to bet that's where we'll see Bam show up next. So, other than that, I think it's safe to say we could go ahead and wrap this episode up. I've got a lot to say about the anime episode next week, but I'll I'll keep my mouth shut for it, dude. Because it's gonna be a good one, man. I mean, this one already, like now we're riding the coattails. I and I really hope that we do get a season two of, of the anime. Same here, buddy. I'm really hoping we get a tease for season two uh, in in this episode next week because, man, I want to see the blonde boy Wangnan show up. You know, dude, yes. Him and his fucking not pokeballs, bro. I'm so ready. <laughs> dude, they're pokeballs, man. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what they're gonna do. Cause I mean, Tagnik. I mean, yeah. What are they gonna do? I have no idea. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. So while we wait for that, go as follow us at Unverse Podcast anywhere you guys go. Let you know when the latest episodes drop. You can send us an email podcast at gmail.com let us know your thoughts man do you hate rachel now i want to hear that answer and if it's not yes don't bother replying if it's not yes don't bother you saying the email no if, if you say yes i want a handwritten letter y and then scan it and then email it so thanks guys and as always we'll catch you on the next episode